Rumors. All right, before we get into our Rumors Roundup, let's go ahead and take a look at 2018. Obviously, the Wolverines 2017 season is unfortunately over, but there are going to be some great games, some great matchups in the beginning of the season mm -hmm. next year. And James, we open up the season at Notre Dame. Yeah, this is going to be a interesting game, Lena. I'm not sure it's one that I would have scheduled if I was Jim Harbaugh, mm -hmm. but it's looking like it might be a little easier to win. So Notre Dame starting running back, their top wide receiver, who might be a first round himself, both going to the pros announcing today is going to devastate Notre Dame's offense, make it much more likely for Michigan to get a win on the road at night in South Bend on September 1st. We'll be likely starting a new quarterback. Brandon Peters maybe, but I think it's much more likely it's Shea Patterson. And what we saw to Brandon Peters, I don't think that uh, he would beat out even Dylan McCaffrey at this point. All right. Also worthy noting, Notre Dame just lost their defensive coordinator. He went That's to right. go coach under Jimbo Fisher at Texas A&M. So maybe something to think about looking to play the fighting Irish. Let's move on to these next slate of games here, James. October 6th, we play Maryland at the Big House. Also some other big Big Ten matchups in this slate of games. What stands out to you? So uh, on this one, this, like, this is the gauntlet. This is if Michigan can win these four – you know, three. There's four games here. If they can win those three big ones, I mean, they're going into November, kind of the schedule with a chance for bigger things, a national mm -hmm. championship potentially, uh, a, a Big Ten championship ideally before that. But with that being said. Wisconsin, Michigan State, back-to-back, -back, then a bye week, then Penn State. Now, two of those games are at home. I'm guessing that Michigan State game will ultimately be a night game, probably be a night game either on Big Ten Network or on Fox because Fox gets to flex those games now. And with that being said, this is the toughest gauntlet out of a four-week stretch I've seen. And these are, you know, these are probably all going to be top 12 teams next season. Oh, yeah, it's definitely going to be a tough schedule for our Wolverines. We're going to go ahead and take it to the next slate of games now, how we're going to round out our season. So at Rutgers versus Indiana at home, and then, of course, at Ohio State before the Big Ten championship game come December 1st. What do you think about this stretch ending up the season? Yeah, I mean, so if Michigan can somehow get through those first nine games, Lena, and get into the, you know, the November 10th matchup mm -hmm. on the road in New Jersey against Rutgers where they won seven. 78 to nothing two years ago, the last time they traveled <laughs> to that state. I think that they would be in really good place. Now, October, the October slate is just slamming. It is amazingly hard. So they're going to be beat up. They're going to be bruised. You're going to know a lot about this team. If they get that uh, that win against Notre Dame, who's again, lost their offensive coordinator, mm -hmm. losing their star receiver, losing their All-American caliber running back, I think that becomes more of a win. And now, that game, just to think about it for a second, Michigan opened yesterday. A lot of Vegas casinos released some odds for next year mm -hmm. for early season games. Michigan was a two-and-a-half point favorite to Notre Dame. I would guess Yes, they'd be about even now uh, that they've lost their best two offensive players to the pros as early entry. So they get to this November 10th game undefeated, Lena. We could be looking at a big season. I think a lot of it's going to be around, is Shea Patterson the quarterback? Is he fitting into a system that works for his skill set? And does Michigan get the right offensive coordinator they're going to need to get an offense that he will shine in? That's what it's going to come down to. If Jim Harbaugh loses this game at Ohio State, replacing a four-year starting quarterback uh, in JT Barrett, he would be 0-4 against the Buckeyes. I know we said he probably could have won two of those games. That would be as bad of a start as we've ever seen. The only other guy who started 0-3 is Rich Rodriguez. All right, so that is your 2018 Michigan Wolverine football schedule. Also along the lines of 2018, a little transition here. There's already some way too early rankings going on in the sport sports world right now. So here's a little segment where they rank in us, James. So Athlon Sports has us at number seven. And then after that, we have, um, excuse me. Sporting we, News. Sporting News. Thank you. They're having us at number 17. So seven top 10. I like that ranking. 17 a little low. But before we uh, before we talk about all of these rankings, James, Fox Sports does have us at number three, Joel Klatt, that is. So let's go ahead and toss it and see what he has to say about our Wolverines. Now let's get into the top three. Michigan, um, for all you people that said Jim Harbaugh can't do anything, I think next year is a big year for him. Obviously, he needs to start winning some of those big games, namely here and here, and I understand that. Uh, but that was an incredible performance from a team that lost maybe more than anybody else to the NFL. They had one starter back on defense, still played incredible defense. I think depending on what happens, obviously, um, uh, with their quarterback transfer and then Brandon Peters, I actually think Brandon Peters is a really good player. If he doesn't go down against Wisconsin, that's a different game. If he plays against Ohio State, that's a different game. If he plays from the beginning of the season, 
I think the Michigan State game is a different game. They are some solid quarterback play away from being 11-1 this year. Uh, true story, right? I mean, that's a, that's a good physical football team. You should hear the coaches who have to play them talk about what they do, uh, whether it's schematically uh, and or with their personnel. So I like Michigan. Their D is going to be terrific, and I think Peters to Peoples-Jones is going to be a great combination. All right, James, that was Joel Clapp putting us at number three in his way too early ranking. So we have seven, we have 17, we have three. What do you feel like is the most accurate? I, you know, frankly, before the bowl game, Lena, I would have said Athlon Sports had the most accurate ranking. I don't think that's fair anymore, frankly. I think number 17 is where Chat Sports would have Michigan right now. Yeah. If we put out a poll today, we put out our top 10 earlier in the week, that show that you and I uh, were involved in. Then we put out five more teams, and Michigan wasn't in that top 15 at mm -hmm. all. You know, those next five not really ranked, but just who was under consideration. Michigan was not under consideration from any of our college football experts. So when we put out that poll Monday night after the national championship game, I think we're going to come, come in about 16, 17, 18. Uh, I think Joel Klatt is he he got that ranking in before Brandon Peters bowl game before 19 to three collapse and Athlon came out with number seven afterwards Michigan's defense is going to be potentially all time Chase Winovich returning mm -hmm. potentially five all Americans we've talked about this before with all these guys returning but nevertheless no offense very poor creativity and blown leads in three straight games they don't deserve to be in the top 10 at this point.